we are beginning a program today, and it's a pilot program which will certainly grow into something larger and larger, and that is a community contact tracing program. We've done contact tracing all along. That a contact is a person who's been exposed to someone that we document to have the COVID infection. When we find someone who has a COVID infection, those people are immediately isolated. But we also work with them to figure out who their contacts were. Luckily, because you have been doing such a great job of cooperating and staying indoors, um, staying isolated, it used to be there were 10 contacts, at least, for every patient that we would find. Now, it looks like there are probably only two or three or four contacts, not surprisingly, because most people have been staying away from others. And that's, that's good news. Uh, but the purpose of this program is to bring on people. We're going to start with 10 people. We may bring on up to 50 or even more as the program grows and as we see the needs for it. As we do more testing, we will find more and more people who have COVID-19. And again, we'll isolate every one of them and we will find every one of their contacts and we will make sure that they stay quarantined and we'll check in with them every day. In other words, what this program means is that we're going to do a more complete job and we're going to do a more meticulous job of making it less and less possible for others in the county to run into someone with COVID-19 infection. Um, there crazy. are, it's not just our county that's bringing more people on. There are going to be thousands of, of people hired who will be these contact investigators. Okay, did you see that? He said, first he said 10, then he said 50, then he said other counties and thousands of others now are going to be hired. Let's just listen to that one more time. <laughs> Um, there are, it's not just our county that's bringing more people on. There are going to be thousands of, of people hired who will be these contact investigators throughout the state. And this is occurring in many, many other states as well, perhaps all of the states in our country. Um, we will be giving intensive training to these people, training not only for Only for what? More contacts. Some of the people we find are going to have trouble being isolated. For instance, if they live in a home where there's only one bathroom and there are three or four other people living there and those people don't have COVID infection, we're not going to be able to keep the person in that home. Every person who we're isolating, for instance, needs to have uh, their own bathroom. And so we'll be moving people like this. That means they're going to be forcibly removing you from your home. Instead of just letting you stay at home and get over your illness. That shit is crazy. Into other kinds of housing that we have available. They'll also have other needs, perhaps. Food. Mm. I wonder what kind of housing they're gonna they're gonna move you to. Would would that be like a FEMA camp or? Mm, sounds sounds like sounds inviting. Sounds like they really want to keep you safe there. Whatever it's going to be, the county will be there to back them up and to support them. Um, we just talked about going from phase one into phase two. We feel that it is very likely that we will have the factors that will qualify us to move into phase two. And what this means is that we will be able to liberalize some of the segments of our daily life here in our county. You know, working, making money, that is public health as well. And we believe that we're going to be able to liberalize further 
the business activities in our county, and I think that will be to all of our good. Um, now, I would like... I like the way he says that, liberalize all of our businesses, or liberate, liberalize, liber... Li yeah, it's all bullshit, buddy. This is Massachusetts. This is the official page. Mm -hmm. Partners in Health. That was part of um, Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare. Charlie Baker, governor of uh, Massachusetts, is the ex-CEO of that. Anything to do with healthcare insurance companies, Baker is on board to sell you out. But I don't even need a link to that shit. Just showing you. California, Massachusetts. Good afternoon. I think as everybody knows, um, our command center and the rest of our team has been working with our colleagues in the healthcare community to prepare the Commonwealth for the surge in COVID-19 cases that we all know is coming. <laughs> uh, we've been working this issue on a number of different fronts because slowing the spread of the virus requires us to use every tool that's available to us. Yesterday you heard our de detailed projections uh, as they currently stand with respect to case numbers and our planning efforts to increase medical and bed capacity for that surge when it arrives. Secretary Sutters and the command center have been working with hospitals to make sure they have the capacity that they need to treat future cases of COVID-19. And we're continuing to work with suppliers and with the federal government around much needed uh, personal protective equipment. Those efforts are key to getting the Commonwealth prepared to treat patients, but there's another critical part of this which involves efforts to increase the state's testing capacity. And as of yesterday, we completed over 56,000 tests so far. We're up to 20 labs conducting tests. And as many know, we set a goal about 10 days ago to complete 3,500 tests a day. We've been consistently hitting or exceeding that goal. And yesterday reported almost 5,000 tests alone. We're going to continue to expand opportunities for new testing capacity and new testing sites as labs keep up with our growth in capacity. On Sunday, for example, there'll be a new drive through testing site for first responders that will open in Foxborough at Gillette Stadium in the parking lot where they expect to test up to 200 first responders a day. This is a great collaboration between the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security the New England Patriots, the Department of Corrections, WellPath, and Quest Diagnostics, which I think, as many of you know, has a pretty aggressive testing facility operating in Marlboro. The test will be provided to police officers, firefighters, and other public safety personnel, and it is free of charge. We'll have more details coming out on that soon. Increasing testing comes with an increase in the number of confirmed cases. We talked about this before, and the next step of our surge preparations involves increasing our ability to trace and isolate cases. We've mentioned before that the command center has been working to ramp up the Commonwealth's tracing program, which is another big part of our effort to fight back against the virus. Today, I'm excited to announce the creation of the COVID-19 Community Tracing Collaborative, which will be a partnership between our command center Partners in Health, who you will hear from shortly, the Department of Public Health, and the Health Connector. Enhanced tracing capacity is an enormously powerful tool for public health officials to rely on in their battle against COVID-19. We're working toward a goal of getting staffed and ready to go on this effort by the end of this month. And what we mean by tracing is that when a person tests positive, public health officials gather information from that person about who else they could have infected. These people are known as close contacts. Public health officials then attempt to contact them, those close contacts who could have been infected. And then those close contacts are made aware that they need to quarantine or get tested themselves. As a reminder, there is tracing happening now, but this program that we're talking about launching today is a much more robust 
targeted approach that we hope can be highly effective at slowing the spread of this highly infectious disease. And to be successful, it will take a coordinated effort and resources. And it's going to be a big part of our ongoing effort uh, to manage and fight our way through COVID-19. Don't tell them shit. You're retarded if you don't. Good news is Mayor Michael Bloomberg has volunteered to help us develop uh, and implement the tracing program. Uh, Mayor Bloomberg was uh, mayor of New York City, as you know, uh, three terms. As governor, I worked with Mayor Bloomberg. Uh, He has then developed an organization. He works with mayors all across the world, literally, in providing them guidance. Uh, He has tremendous insight, both governmentally and from a private sector business perspective in this. Remember, his company, Bloomberg, they went through the China closed down, open up. They went through the European closed down, open up. Uh, So he's had quite a bit of uh, experience in this area. It's a very big undertaking, and we thank him very much for uh, taking it on because it is going to require a lot of attention, a lot of insight, a lot of experience, and a lot of uh, resources. We're also going to be partnering with uh, Johns Hopkins and Vital Strategies in putting together that tracing operation. Uh, it'll be coordinated tri-state and downstate. Is Michael Bloomberg providing funding? Are you giving him the power to hire people? And Mayor de Blasio this morning talked about the city launching its own effort to do tracing and testing. How will the two things overlap? They will all be coordinated. City's effort will be coordinated. Nassau's effort, Suffolk's effort, Westchester's effort. They will uh, be hiring people independently. You have city employees that chart with the number of employees. Those will be Westchester employees, state employees, city employees. But it all has to be coordinated. There is no tracing that can work within one jurisdiction. So Michael Bloomberg is leading some... Yeah, let me just finish. Coordinating council? Yeah, let me just finish. You cannot trace someone within the boundaries of New York City because once the person goes outside of New York City, well, now that would be a Westchester person, right? I live in Westchester. Take me. I lived in Westchester. I worked in New York City. New York City is going to trace me? How? I'm in Westchester. That's a different county. You can't trace me. Well, we'll go trace people in Westchester. Oh, no, no. Then Westchester is going to say, that's my resident. Don't come in here and trace my resident. All right, let's forget the jurisdictional fight and the political local fight. We'll coordinate everyone. This is a monumental undertaking. Who's going to do it? We're all going to do it. City, state, Nassau, Suffolk, Jersey, Connecticut. Okay, how do we do it? I don't know. We've never done it before. Michael Bloomberg will uh, design the program, design the training. He's going to make a financial contribution also, uh, put together an organization that can help hire the people because we have to expand this number tenfold uh, and get this all done like this. This has to happen. You don't have months to plan and do this. You have weeks to get this up and running super ambitious undertaking. Uh, And uh, Mayor Bloomberg will help coordinate the entire effort. He'll be working with the state. I'm working with the city and the Nassau and Suffolk and Jersey and Connecticut. How much money is given? I don't know what the financial contribution is. Does anybody know? Um, it's upwards of $10 million, but what Mayor Bloomberg is doing is through um, the program at Johns Hopkins, which he funds very heavily, their public health program, which is preeminent in the country. He's helping us to design the programmatic, operational, and technological components of our contract tracing program, and they, in partnership with us, are creating an online curriculum to train the tracers, to recruit them, to interview, to perform the background checks, and then we're going to coordinate all of the counties and also with New Jersey and Connecticut. You can't tell these people anything, man. I'm telling you. Don't tell them a fucking thing. People are crazy, man. Really. The fuck they're doing is out of this world. Really. That is like 
I can't even fucking wrap my head around this shit. Don't tell them shit. You know what? You got to give them a name. Tell them, you know, Bill Gates. He was just shaking the cocksucker's hand. Rat out the rats. That's all. Give them all the rat names. The ratty rat rats. <laughs>